What is up, fam? Host Message finds you all well in good spirits. Well, 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 look what we got here today. We have a 2018 Shelby GT350, the quote-unquote forgotten supercar of Mustangs right now. This is still the Halo Mustang. Everyone is so excited about GT500 and for good reason. And we still don't even know all the specs about it. But what we have here is rated our cars GT350. He's giving me the awesome opportunity to drive this, so please go sub to his channel, link in the description. I'm excited because I think what we are forgetting is this particular car, at one point, believe it or not, was so coveted and so expensive, it actually was unattainable for many of us. But now, like Rated R Cars told me, he got this for MSRP. Believe it or not, there are people, this is not even an R version, but still great, the GT350, uh, was almost 20, people paid 20, 10 to 20, even $30,000 over a sticker for this car. And now, just a few short years later from 2016, you can finally get it for MSRP and save all that money. Of course, put these stripes on afterwards. I love this setup. This is, this is so exotic. You know, one of the things I love about it, the Shell BG350 is just to, just looking at all the specialness. Um, as a Mustang person, just seeing the Shelby sign, the Shelby snake there it just this is what it's about so it looks special it feels special we're gonna drive this guy um, you just know this is so well engineered this is a track aficionado funny thing is a lot of people would, would cross shop this with a GT uh, one of the things I think about is if I was to, uh, I have a 2018 GT but if you think about resale value and just specialness uh, the Shelby's where it's at. But anyways, uh, let's take a look at what's underneath the hood here. And there she blows. Carbon fiber. This is this is one of Ward's 10 best engines. Exiling well built engine. One of the critiques is that it's hard to get the power on the street because you have to ring out the transmission. Uh, again, this does have the Tremec transmission, which is what Ford should have put in the 2018 and up GTs. They did not, hence there's some issues, but I'm sure gonna work all those out with the, the shift forks, but that's for another story, another day, another time. What we have here is the beautiful package. Uh, everything's put together. This has a Magnum ride. This has the flat plane crank, the high revving, uh, RPMs, and then we have this amazing transmission. So this car is is, is put together. This is exotic. Uh, it's it's hard for me, even if I got this to do anything. I just, I would do simple like modifications. It looks so, it's just set up right. People do uh, supercharge and pro charge these guys that I've seen. Uh, but for me, I think I've kind of leave this alone, this work of art, this, this, this is just so gorgeous. But uh, let's hear how she sounds. Let's turn this bad boy on. Love it. One of the things that would interest me is that the, the exhaust always starts off in quiet mode, uh, which when you're trying to show off to your friends <laughs> is a little bit, because every, every GT350 cold start video I've seen in it, it's always like cold. Okay, let's go to sport. There you go. Let's see how the engine sounds. Let's rev this guy up. Well, I think I've gawked over this car. 
uh, a lot and I would love to have one, but let's test drive it and see if there's the one you should get. Okay, so we are in the Shelby GT350. Man, I, like, I just love looking at this steering wheel and the snake and the whole experience is just so, so neat. All right, make sure I got everything. All right, just checking. Okay, so let's go. Creature comforts are still here. You still have uh, heated cool seats. Uh, have the Alcantara steering wheel. Feels really nice. And, you know, uh, I'm so used to the digital dash that I'm trying to like, I like the analog, it's classic. It's, it's still classic, it looks good. But again, let's see how she feels. Uh, I just haven't I had the chance to drive the 2019 bullet recently and it still has the MT82 transmission and, and this particular one has a wonderful wonderfully amazing Tremec and I can tell you right now this is how they should have done it this is a great transmission feels so so it's so much better to shift this particular Mustang then to shift the MT82 in the bullet uh, because the clutch doesn't feel springy it's just this is a transmission I, if, if you're gonna get a manual the, that Ford should put in every every Mustang uh, GT or I know it's a more expensive option but I think that if they want people to upgrade to that transmission they would pay for it um, because just tooling around town you know we're just going about 35 40 miles an hour this is the way to go um, just the, the feel, uh, you know, I was just in my 2018 GT and this this just feels so, I like wanna turn and I wanna, I wanna have fun and just turn the wheel and it's just, it's so light on its feet. That's what I keep, that keeps coming to mind. Um, how this feels so much lighter. At about on over 5,000 RPMs is where she really comes to life. That's why it's made in setup for uh, the uh, the direction. I just saw rated uh, incredible Hemi and uh, who else did I just see? Mr. Uh, RT Life. They're doing their video. Uh, just so you know, this is a collaboration videos we're doing based off of the subscribers of me because the YouTubers came, so we're kind of having fun with each other's cars. But this shifter is just okay. I like the way this the way this Tremec feels. It is not a penalty box at all. It is so well balanced and weighted. I really like the way this feels. Now to get back to the premise of the video, because I keep gawking about how much I love this um, particular setup with the GT350, and it's so. By the way, it it feels so much more easily to whip around than, of course, the GT because the GT is made for more of the straight line. Even though I have performance pack level one, but man, this is balanced beautifully. driver oh this makes you such a good driver this this is a this is a scalpel this is what this car is this is a scalpel this makes me want to actually go to the racetrack to, to run laps this is a scalpel and my goodness it feels great i mean i'm looking at the hood and the sight lines and just the way they brought it down just right the way they designed this particular car i'm just in love with what they've done and around town, you know, it feels very easy to, to maneuver. Um, but like I said, let's get back to the point of the video. I'm just having a good time, not even talking, I apologize. Uh, let's get back to the point of the video. This is the time to buy this car because they're selling them for MSRP in the right dealerships. This is an exotic car and it's gonna hold its resale value and for the guy that wants to just enjoy his car and look at it, take it to the racetrack and all that kind of good stuff, I would love this. I would love to have this in, if I had the ability, I would love to have this just in the stable. Um, the GT350, it's, when this came out, everybody lost their minds. You know, everyone was, I was trying to get one too. I couldn't afford the, the markups, but 
everybody lost their minds, everybody wanted, and now they're accessible, now they're available in the same price tag that I paid for, for my Mustang in the 50,000 uh, Mustang GT in the $50,000 um, uh, price range. But this is such a treat to drive. Let's talk about the interior. It feels, uh, it doesn't feel as special to me as my 18 GT because I'm missing the digital dash. I know it could be, it's, it's immature and corny to some people, but I really like, uh, I really like that darn digital dash. And uh, he has the same kind of seats I have, which are heated and cooled. Um, one of the things you do want to worry about is you do get this uh, steering wheel, the uh, Alcantara steering wheel, which is gorgeous in your hands. Your hands, uh, the oils in your fingers can mat down uh, this material. Uh, the reason I know that is because I had this, I had upgraded my 15 EcoBoost Mustang with this particular steering wheel because I wanted that that awesome exotic look and uh, I didn't care for it the way I should have. <laughs> I had all these like disgusting marks, like a toothbrush every, every two, every month when you clean it and just kind of nicely make another toothbrush or even like a terry cloth and clean it up but that's just a tip um this car is not really about the creature comforts it's about the driving experience like it just sounds this car is ready to like it wants you to like beat you up more the control is crazy really a fan um, the car feels so I, I just keep thinking the word butter this car feels like butter um, because the, yes there are people who don't take their Mustang to the drag strip who don't take their Mustang to the racetrack even even though this is what it's built, built for and are just comfortable enjoying a nice beautiful piece of engineering mastery and that's what this car is uh, Everything is functional, the, the cooling, all that kind of good stuff. It is really, I'm just really a fan of it. All right, so what we normally do here on this channel is we always try, I know it sounds silly, but we always like to check the gas mileage on every car we review or test drive. So uh, let's see if we could do that here. Let me pull in here and let's see if we can check something. What I like about this car too, uh, compared to the Mustang that I have, is I love how, and that's the way Ford should do it for the next Mustang. I love how the uh, suspension setup, we'll go to sport here, the damper setup is there. The steering setup is there, right where it should be on the steering wheel. And the only thing you have here is your launch control and you have your exhaust, uh, your exhaust, which is, you can go to sport, normal, it's right there. So I do like the steering wheel setup better. Um, the OKs are switched on the 18s, but this this is this is this is lovely. This shifter, the way this all feels. But let's check out the. Um, I gotta figure out how this works on this system. Let's check out the trip fuel. So 16.7 miles to the gallon is what rated our car is getting in his GT350. This is my one critique um, that I do have to say about it is that unfortunately it is you run out of road before you really get to reach the potential of this car on the street. It's not made for what you're thinking, it's made for the racetrack. And a lot of people who try to, to take these cars and, and and do certain things with them, they think they, they end up not getting to the power band in time because you run out of road. But I still would love, 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 love to have this. And I, I tell you what, this is a fun driving experience. I really am enjoying myself um, because of the way it's so balanced. Um, it is not a penalty box uh, like some uh, exotic cars are because you don't know, you know, how comfortable you'll be on long roads, but I could, I could daily this. Once again, I wanted to just tell you guys that if you're in the market, 
and you're in the decision of should I or shouldn't I, I would get the G250 if you're the kind of guy who just wants to enjoy a beautiful Mustang, have something that's special, and uh, you're not going to probably modify it that much and just appreciate the beautiful craftsmanship that is this car that will hold its resale value and it's very coveted and very respected among the automotive enthusiasts and industry in the world. And I'd appreciate if you guys leave some feedback on your opinion on the G250. Is it the forgotten halo car of Mustang? Is it the forgotten Mustang that everyone so coveted and loved and now no one says much about? All right, y'all, I hope you know it never ends. Peace.